Hey, what's up, everybody? I am joined by a gentleman who has been in exile for just a little while, but now he's back, Brian Fargo. Thank you for uh, taking some time to talk to us. Thank you. I'm happy to be out of an exile. <laughs> Where am you, I? I'm you, sure. still in exile. You'll, you'll be going back soon enough. Right, so right. you're a man who has been around in the game industry for a while, and you, you have done some pretty significant stuff. Just for the people who aren't familiar with you, can you give me kind of the 30-second rundown of like where you've been and what you've done up right, to now? Right, well, that'll force me to age my, or date <laughs> myself. But, uh, yeah, it goes, uh, I, I founded Interplay Productions back in the, back in the early 80s. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, role-playing games were my big category. Bard's Tale was really kind of the first thing that put, put me on the map. And then there was Wasteland, and there was Battle Chess. Then we go in the 90s, there was Castles. Uh, we started doing uh, the Baldur's Gate series. I actually started working with Blizzard. I gave Blizzard their first development project ever. They had a game called The Lost Vikings, and they sort of went on and did this little thing called World of Warcraft, right? <laughs> uh, the Fallout series was, was, you know, was, was, was one of my babies, and then uh, Kingpin. And then, anyway, so I did a whole, whole lot, a bunch of products in the 90s, and then uh, we did kind of a funny little humorous product, kind of a remake of Bard's Tale. In the uh, well, what about five years ago, right? And uh, and then we've been kind of low key for the last two or three years. We've been sort of working secretly on Hunted the Demons Forge, which you got to see today. You guys haven't shipped a product since Bard's Tale, like you mentioned, and you, you also mentioned during the presentation you just gave that you have been kind of sequestered out of the spotlight to the point where a lot of people have been wondering, you know, what what are these guys doing? Are they still making games? Uh, how did it feel? being kind of submerged like that did you have a hard time not like speaking out when you saw these comments saying hey yeah we're still here i mean what was that like for you yeah no i mean it it was frustrating because i'd see the blogs and they'd say you know what happened are they out of business is he you know where where are they you know all this speculation about what we were doing but i was on lockdown for what i could talk about now the truth is i've been experimenting we've you know working on line rider and impossible quiz Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic contraption we've done these little applications so we could understand the new dynamics of the market uh, but those aren't the big, high-profile products, right? So but we were really working away this entire time on, on the hunted product. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it has been nice to get out and let people get, yes, I'm alive, I'm a well, and I'm still working. Yeah. Well, so Hunted is, is the new game, Hunted the Demon's Forge. Uh, so give us just the, the kind of the quick rundown, since you're, you guys are just now uh, announcing this title. Right, right. Well, I mean, the game is basically, uh, there was a very sort of popular and famous category of game called the Dungeon Crawl, right? And it started off with Wizardry and went Bard's Tale and Ultima Underworld, Stonekeep, uh, Hex and Heretic, and, and it, was, it, was, it always done well. Everybody loved that notion of getting lost in a dungeon and finding secret doors and gold and, you know, the, the, your Vorpal Blade, all that kind of bit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the, 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 ter- the, ter- the, the, uh, the category hadn't been represented in a long, long time. So I should have looked at it and said, well, you know, gosh, what would this look like with today's technology? So it was taking the kind of classic dungeon crawl experience, which got me and all the early pioneers in this business to begin with, and mixing it with the latest technology, which is the Unreal Engine in this particular case, and but putting it on the, on the Sony PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, and the PC, and, and bringing that style of gameplay to today's gamer, but recognizing today's gamer is different than the one of the 90s, too. I mean, they, you know, they play Gears of War, Halo, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's, I think it's a nice hybrid of between bringing that back, that sort of classic sort of uh, vibe to, 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 to today. You guys are working on Unreal, like you said, and you, you said in the presentation that Unreal is basically perfect for this style of game. What is it about that engine that makes it perfect? The thing about the engine is when you're, you're doing something where it's more closed environment type stuff, it's not an open world streaming product. It's not like the crisis type thing. That's a different kind of thing. Or something that is more narrow in scope, you could, the graphic fidelity you can achieve is fantastic. Well, by default, you're going through dungeons. It's somewhat you know narrow in scope. That said, we do some have some open expanses and things like that that are more you know because we need those big sort of moments, those big those big dr- dramatic moments. But it's not an open world, so for that it was perfect. And for in terms of what it does with its lighting and its physics and everything else that that, that, that works in that field. That works perfect for what we tra- we're trying to do. And at the same time, we built around what that product could do because what we wanted to do was spend 100% of our effort working on how good the graphics look and the design. And, and, and if you're not fighting the technology or trying to invent the technology at the same time, it allows you to do something that's graphically really super, which hopefully that's what's coming across. You guys are shipping this on PC 360 and PS3. Uh, and Commodore 64. And, wow. Yeah. Man, they're still milking, <laughs> still milking that thing. That's crazy. So yeah. Uh, so the Unreal Engine has had sort of a, an uneven history across those different platforms. At, at this kind of late state, uh, stage of the game, 
Do you feel like the, the feature set and the ease of development has kind of reached parity across all three of those, those platforms? Well, I, I think that's a function of two things. One is the first thing I just talked about is that we made a game that around what the Unreal Engine could and couldn't do, mm -hmm. right? So right off the bat, I think sometimes if you're going to take the Unreal Engine and make a flight sim or something, maybe it's not well suited to that, right? Or an open world streaming product, probably not well suited for that. Mm -hmm. For this kind of game, it does it well. Okay. The other part of it is that we're doing all of the versions internally. I think some of the things that people have seen in the past is that there'd be one core team that would create this one and they would send out the code to get it done on the PC or the PlayStation 3, in which case those versions would suffer it's the same team doing everything here so the parity will be completely there so on this particular product there won't be any issues you guys have hooked up with bethesda as a publishing partner and they've uh they've kind of been expanding their sort of third-party presence in the last year or two how did you guys get uh get involved with them and what makes them kind of the best suited for this project uh, well, we, we approached Bethesda, it, it was about two and a half years ago, um, you know, there was contract negotiation, we didn't start right away the first time we met him, and, uh, I mean, in many ways, people compare Bethesda to the early Interplay days, right? I mean, they, you know, they were doing the Star Trek games, now they're doing Fallout, of course, they're the RPG house, uh, they're working with Obsidian, which is Fergus, and, you know, now they're working with me, right? And so, uh, it's like going into a cousin's house, it feels like. But when, when we showed them the project, I mean, the one thing about Interplay was always a by gamers, for gamers mentality. And I think they have some of that at Bethesda, right? So when we sort of said, here's what we're doing, you know, the, the concept that I told you, uh, they were like, got it right away. Yeah. You know, there's no boards of bringing in marketing people and international and the toy people and the, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> it was bang, we get it, we love it, let's do it. And that's what's, that's what's great about them, and, and, and we just got rolling right away. You mentioned Fergus, he's over at Obsidian, they're doing the new Fallout game. Yep. Uh, you, you founded Interplay, you know, uh, Bethesda's got the Fallout license. It feels like there's all these pieces kind of like fitting back together in, in a different way than they fit before. Do you ever see any kind of maybe deeper uh, connectedness or kind of synergy going on between these different studios? Uh, you know, th that could very well happen in the future. I mean, ultimately, that's up to Bethesda. They're the publisher. You know, I, I was Interplay. They're Bethesda. Yeah, so yeah. how they operate their business will be up to them. But I think, you know, we hope to have a longstanding relationship with those guys. You know, for me, we try to develop a franchise. And I'm hoping we're doing this franchise for the next 10 years. Right? And, and Fergus is right down the street. And, you know, who, who knows what comes out of all of it? I mean, the main thing is... You get in business with people, and, and, and if you're successful and you like each other, you tend to find more ways to do business with each other. Where is this game at in development in terms of completion, and when are we going to see it on shelves? Well, it, you know, it, it's only in an alpha stage right now, and uh, and we're graphically speaking, I mean, it, it's looking good. You know, so it, from here on out, it's just going to get better, and there's going to be more personality and more depth. Uh, in terms of its release time, you know, fortunately we're with a publisher that will say, hey, when we're done, we're done, mm -hmm. right? So we're when, it, when it's done, right? When it's done. I mean, it's the old, the classic thing. When yeah, it's done, yeah. and uh, you know, sort of watch this space. They'll announce when that's going to be. But we're we're uh, you know, uh, you know, we're all behind it. We're trying to you know get it to a completion date, but we're just not putting a date yet. Very cool. All right. Well, Brian, thanks for your time. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.